Hi, welcome to our YouTube channel. This is Pastor Francis. And so if you want to hear more encouraging and inspiring messages, we'd like you to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And so as you watch this next video, my prayer is that you get inspired and may God speak to you personally in your situation. God bless you. Hello there, Victory Green Hills. I'm Pastor Jeff. Thank you for having me once again. Alam mo, Pastor Francis, maraming salamat sa opportunity that you have given me. I do hope and pray that uh, we're gonna encounter God today. So, today po ay Palm Sunday. Alam nyo po ito, this, uh, this is the time that uh, Jesus was about to enter po uh, yung Jerusalem, riding in a donkey, and people were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, and they were, they were all shouting, okay? And uh, you know what? If there's one thing true about this, um, the Israelites, they're always drawn to having a king to govern them. Nalala ko dun sa Old Testament, they demanded a king from uh, King, uh, sorry, from Prophet Samuel during that time. Naiinggit kasi sila sa mga neighbors nila, right? And so from theocracy, meaning to say, si God lang dapat yung king nila, they converted to uh, um, monarchy. At pag tinignan nyo, from that day on, it started their downfall. Kasi po, they were governed by different kings, imperfect human kings. They turned into, you know, different forms of idolatry and all. Kaya medyo may kakulitan din po itong mga Israelites. And hopefully we can learn something from them. And we're gonna continue with the book of Isaiah. Dito po tayo nakakamp ngayon for the past two weeks. And the story of, ito pong book of Isaiah is, uh, ang kung meron ditong recurring theme, it is a call for justice and righteousness. It is a call for repentance. At pag tinignan natin, medyo, medyo, pag konting review lang, medyo, medyo may kakulitan talaga itong mga Israelites. I mean, God reared them, raised them up. Tingnan nyo kung ano ginawa. Sabi, Lord, you have abandoned your people, the descendants of Jacob. They are full of superstitions. From the east, they practice divinations like the Philistines and embrace pagan custom. So sila po, instead of having one God, worshiping God, minana nila o nahawa sila sa mga superstitious belief nung mga neighboring nation nila. And not only that, they're full of silver and gold and, and parang there's no end to their treasure. Kumbaga, they're full of horses and there's no end to their chariots. They now put their trust on material stuff. They put their hope in their possessions. They try to create this false security by having a lot of horses and chariots. And not only that, their land is full of silver and gold and also horses and chariots. Parang yung identity nila and security, doon na napunta. In fact, they turn to worshiping, you know, material stuff. Their land has been full of idols. Okay, hindi lang yung American idols. Pati yung mga idols din, okay? So, and not only that, sabi pa nito, they bow down to make, to, to the work of their hands, to what their fingers have made. Grabe ito, ah. This uh, group of people who demanded a king, alright, now even erected images of Baals. To the point po, ah, nagsasacrifice na rin sila ng mga anak nila. There was this one king who sacrificed his own son, uh, sa, sa apoy. So come to think of it, bakit ganun? Why did they turn up like that? I mean, started from being a chosen nation from Abraham and all. Now God gave them a king. Okay? And what happened now? Si God, medyo kailangan silang kalusin. And we're gonna continue with the story. Sabi dito, and though a tenth remain in it, it will be burned again. Like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains when it is felled. Ang sinasabi po rito, God will punish them. Yun ang mahirap. Akala nila, they can go scot-free, makakataka sila sa mga pinaggagawa nila idolatry, but God will use a wicked nation to accomplish His will. Ito po mga Assyrians, it's kind of like a picture of an ox. Kakat daw po itong... Uh, Israelites na parang uh, mga trees. And then, ang matitira are all stamp. Alam niyo po yung stamp? Hindi yung stampad, ano? Ito po yung mga putol na puno. Okay? Final like this picture, because God will remove every form of idolatry, tatanggalin niya lahat sa mga Asherah, Pauls na yan, yung mga idols, tatagpasin niya yan, kumbaga. 
Why? Eh di ba love ni God ang Israel? Di ba chosen to? Why in the world is even gonna use an evil nation to accomplish po yung pagtagpas uh, sa mga sa, sa land of Israel and Judah, itong divided nation na to? Simply because God is just. Uh, si God po, He will not tolerate this spoiled brats, Jews or Israelites as a loving father. So siya po, He is a loving father, yet, lo- yet He is a just God. But then again, it is the beauty po about God. Judgment is not His final word. Judgment will not be His final act. Restoration is the goal, so He's gonna bring them back to His loving arms. So ito pong kwento na to, as we go through this Palm Sunday uh, preaching, we're gonna talk about hope. That he is not a condoning father to, the, to this uh, uh, group of people. He's not going to allow these uh, 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 Israelites that they're just going to do whatever they, they feel like doing. And God will show them that he loves them to the point of talagang nipping it to the bud, kung baga. Kaya pag sinabing may stamp, okay, ito po ay may mag-iiwan po na remnant. Okay, hindi naman niya i-annihilate lahat na tong mga Jews na to. He is gonna cut them down but not cut them off. That's very important. Jesus, God will cut them down but will not cut them off. Okay? So, let's go back to the story. Ito po yung itsura ng uh, stamp. Then again, magkakaroon po ng hope. Meron daw shoot na lalabas out of the stump. Pag silabing shoot, it signifies a small, seemingly insignificant tender plant okay, na easily, pwede po yung ma- ma- mahawakan, mamamatay, seemingly insignificant. But then again, it's a picture of hope. And maybe some of you here today, you feel like you're already a stump. Wala nang buhay yung relationship mo sa asawa mo wala nang buhay yung marriage nyo wala nang buhay yung parenting mo sa anak mo wala nang buhay yung pitaka mo and seemingly you're so depressed na parang ang laki-laki ng problema at may lumalabas-labas na konting hope wag mong maliitin ang small beginnings because here's what what Isaiah said there shall come for a shoot from the stump of Jesse, talking about the dad of uh, uh, King David, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. As sinasabi dito, there's gonna be a humble beginning, a humble origin that the Israelites thought na reduce na sila to a handful of remnant. Kasi nga po, nung dumating na, we know the story, nung dumating na yung mga uh, uh, mag, uh, magko-conquer sa kanila, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, all these uh, nations, they thought they're gonna be forgotten. Because pag may, pagka po si God, merong mga nation na annihilate na, nawawala na. Yung mga Assyrians, wala na po Assyrians ngayon. But then again, sabi ni God, there's gonna be a shoot from the stump of Jesse. So there's hope. Okay? So today we're gonna talk about who is this shoot na sinabi, gonna, it's gonna be their king. A future kingdom will come out of this shoot. And then, anong gagawin niya? What will he do? And then lastly, para sa yon. So, again, against the background of Judah's sin, despite the dark warnings of judgment, si Isaiah po was commissioned to proclaim the coming of the promised Messiah. Alam niyo kung movie ito, na iba na background dito, parang dun, 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 dun. kasi ito na yung parang, uh, parang transition ng movie. Akala all throughout the movie, parang puro negative, madilim, and dark, and all. And then out of the blue, this story pala is a story of hope. The coming of the promised Messiah, Emmanuel, that will shine bright and will give eternal hope. So, makita natin yung pagpasok ng New Testament um, in, in the book of uh, Matthew, but then sa Isaiah pala, pinapisay na yan, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Talking about the birth of this uh, shoot. 
on, on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Now, let me tell you something. I told you kanina, um, they were cut down, but not cut off. The house of David was reduced during this time ng New Testament to a very low na mga pamilya na lang ng karpintero. Na, na, Napipicture nyo ba for a moment? King David, ah, the most powerful, most decorated king and general during his time, hindi na nagtuloy yung monarchy niya. Wala nang king noong time ni, ni Jesus na galing kay David. In fact, they were reduced to obscurity and poverty dahil mahirap lang po si Joseph during this time. And not only that, the baby was born in a manger, hindi po sa castle. So during this time, wala na. Wala na yung lineage ni King David, the puro king, king, king. No, 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 no. They were reduced to merely a family of carpenters. Why? Just so you know that God can turn things around. That even as a small, tiny, little shoot, it can spur hope. Because God initiated it. So yung pagdating po ni Jesus, seemingly insignificant. But that's just the start of hope. And that's my hope and prayer for all of you today. That we are not just gonna parang uh, live each day na parang, eh, kung may pag-asa, di meron. Kung may vaccine, vaccine. Are you putting your hopes sa vaccine? Ang daming bansa sa Europa may vaccine na, pero pataas pa rin na pataas sila. Ang daming bansa po, kompleto na sa vaccine. In terms of a second shot na, yung mga pinsa ko sa Amerika, second shot na. Pero it doesn't cure the depression that they're experiencing. So if you think that one time, big nine, yumaman lang ako, mawawala depression ko. Yumaman lang ako, ay isang marriage ko. Have you ever thought of that? Sino sa inyo rito parang feeling mo kung yumaman ka lang, mawawala lahat ng problema mo? Eh di sana wala nang mayaman, may problema. Ako nga may problema eh. Ako yaman. <laughs> tumawa ka, kanina pa kita pinapatawa, hindi ka tumatawa. Oh Jake, tumawa ka. But seriously, it seems like it, Jesus came from a tiny dead stump but guess what? Eternal hope will stem from this. So, God is just, kaya kailangan niyang tulutin lahat ng mga idolatry na itong mga uh, Israelites na to, right? But also, God is loving. Praise God for that, that He is a loving God. He is introducing a new kind of kingdom. Jesus' coming marks the inauguration of the kingdom of God. All right? At pag-usapan nga natin, ano tong, uh, uh, who is this king? That's Jesus. And look at this picture. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding will rest upon him. Unlike si King Solomon, people thought pinaka-wise na king na, king na si Solomon. Yeah, nung bata-bata siya, pero nung tumatanda, hindi na siya wise. <laughs> Kumuha na ng maraming asawa. 700 concubines and 300 wives. Ang dami nun, isang libo. Ang dami biyan na nun. Okay, but anyway, so, pag dinita mo to, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the, and the fear of the Lord. Wow! The, this king that will come from that stump will be the perfect leader. Unlike their previous kings, this king will administer wisdom that comes from God. Okay? Remember in Luke chapter 4, verses 17 to 18, yung the Spirit of the Lord has anointed me. Remember si Jesus, pumunta sa sinagog. Ang ganda ng drama na to. Ah. Tinan niyo, pumasok siya sa sinagog, kinuha niya yung isang uh, uh, scroll, and then binasa niya yung from the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He's anointed me to proclaim good news, blah, blah, blah. And then sabi niya sa verse 18, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Tapos sinara niya, tapos pinatong niya rin yung scroll. Sabi niya sa mga tao, Today! The scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Tapos sila, sila Peter, sila John, boom, gumanon sa gilid ni Jesus. Ang tindi nun, no? But seriously, yun ang sinabi ni Jesus, the Spirit of the Lord is on me, siya yun. And, and this is the kind of king that has come. And sabi nito, his delight will be in the fear of the Lord. Okay? He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear. No, 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 no. This king, Kakaiba to, pare. May discernment to. Nakikita niya yung puso and he knows the innermost thoughts ng tao. So his judgment will be sure. Kasi minsan kaya natin magkunwari sa harapan ng ating mga leader. But then this king is different. His judgment will be sure. 
And sabi with righteousness, he shall judge the poor, decide with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. Now, listen up. From a humble beginning, like a tender shoot, this will, uh, the, the king will be a powerful king, a compassionate king as well. Alam niyo po yung mga mayayaman and powerful, they depend on lawyers and politicians to protect them. Pero po yung may hirap, the meek are dependent on impartial justice system. Hopefully, yung mga judge, uh, talagang impartial, di ba? But then again, we all know that hindi hu lahat ganun, lalo na sa mundong ibabaw. But this, this verse is saying, ito daw pong king na to, he will judge impartially and in righteousness. The needy and the poor will not be oppressed by this king. Okay. So, again, righteousness shall be the belt of his waist and faithfulness the belt of his loin. What he's simply saying is, his reign will be characterized by righteousness and faithfulness. Okay? As if they were integral part of his clothing. Para pong belt. During the olden times, yung belt kasi hindi lang po pang, pang pantalon. Yung belt po, lahat doon nakakarga. Lalagyan nila ng pera, ng sword. Yun yung nag-hold sa lahat ng damit ng tao. Kaya, kumbaga, what this verse is saying, na ang nag-hold sa kanyang pagkatao ay characterized ng righteousness and faithfulness. So, Ilan leaders natin kilala natin ganyan dito sa mundo na to? As in yung lifestyle niya, okay, ay marked by righteousness and faithfulness. So, yung pa lang po tayo, sino yung king na to? That's the kind of king that this verse is saying. And what will be the outcome of his leadership? He is the prince of peace. Mamaya pag-uusapan natin yan. Anong gagawin niya? Okay? So next, what will he do? Ano yung gagawin niya? Well, actually, he will bring peace. Okay? This king that came out of that shoot will be the prince of peace. Grabe ito, ha? Pag tinignan nyo itong verse na ito, ma-excite ka na ito ang mag sa atin. Tinan nyo to, The wolf, okay, si Jacob, okay, shall dwell with the lamb. And the leopard shall lie down with the goats. And then the wall, um, we're talking about peace, and then the calf and the lion and the fat and calf together, and the little child shall lead them. Pag tinan nyo to, uh, these are three unlikely pairings. Tinan nyo to ha, may, may wall, saka lamb, leopard, saka goat. Hindi pa pwede magsama-sama to. Saka, saka meron pang isa, yung calf and lion, Hindi pwede magsama-sama to. They're talking about having peace. There's harmony. Former enemies would coexist harmoniously. Pag dumating daw po yung reign ng kingdom na to, si God, si Jesus Christ, and His kingdom permeates the hearts of people, lahat po ng under His sovereignty, they will live in complete harmony with each other. And that's the reason why I said in the book of John, love one another as I have loved you. People will know that you are my disciple if you love one another. Hindi na yung predator no longer consuming the prey. Hindi na yung wolf laging inatake yung lamb, yung leopard, kinakain yung goat, and then yung calf, kinakain ng lion. No, 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 no. When this kingdom come, those who will be under his reign, there's gonna be unity and harmony. How about that? Grabe to, no? It intends to have a picture of a world where people will live at peace with each other. A world where sin is no longer creating hostilities that separate one person or tribe or nation from one another. Um, recently lang po, nasa news natin, ano, um, meron 200 plus na mga vessel yung, yung China dun sa ating uh, Julian Felipe Reef. And, and, and parang hindi natin maalis yung, okay, ano, ge- may gera ba? May gulo ba? Kasi nga po, when there's sin, when there's greed, whatever it is, it creates hostilities. Kaya nakakalungkot po minsan, there are leaders who are promoting uh, l- sin and promoting uh, disunity and disharmony. Pero once this king comes into our hearts, and his kingdom reigns in our hearts, ano mo yung feeling na? Pare, I can overlook offense. Imagine a marriage we're in, nagre-reign ang kingdom ni God. 
Pagka na-offend si Mister, nasabi lang ni Mister, Honey, pinakasalang kita dahil mahal kita. Hindi dahil nababasis kung mamahalin mo ko o hindi. It will take more than that to offend me. Nao, kaka-offend yung ginawa mo, pero dahil ako'y nagre-reign ng puso ko ng ng kingdom ni God, it will take more than that para ma-offend mo ko. Lagi kang nag- nagpo-promote ng unity and harmony. Hindi kayo yung parang cat and dogs, kayong mag-asawa ever since, pero nung dumating si Christ, para kayo talagang nagmamahal ang bagong kasal lagi. Because that's the promise. When this king comes, there's gonna be unity and harmony. You overlook mo yung offense. Knowing that you value the relationship more than the offense. I remember the story of this guy. Um, you know, uh, Mark Pinglis, he's a member of our church. And then one time I guested him in my uh, show, uh, sa, sa Facebook Live. Uh, Kinwento niya yung buhay niya. He grew up uh, into a single mom environment. Nung pong nanay niya nabuntis by a foreigner, uh, they kind of like abandoned, uh, they were abandoned by the dad, the father. Uh, French po yung tatay niya. Kaya Pinglis, kaya may churang French to si Mark. And then, growing up, sobrang hirap na tong sila, Mark. Kinikwento niya, talaga sabi niya, Pastor Jeff, naglilinis ako nung mga, yung malabanan, medyo kadiri to sa mga kumakain po, no? yung sa malabanan, yung mga oh, naglilinis, no? ah, huwag natin pag-usapan. Pero, kargador din siya sa palengke. And kaya lang matangkad, natutong mag-basketball, kinuha po siya to play basketball sa mga barabarangay until, fast forward, naglaro po dito sa camp sa isang uh, uh, school dito po sa Recto. And then nakilala uh, po siya and all. And then kinasal po siya kay Danica, anak ni Bossing Big. Magkasama sila sa gym and all na encounter po nila pareho si Christ. Na born again. And then the kingdom of God reigned over their lives. And one time si Danica siguro na prompt ni Lord, why don't we look for your dad? Bakit din natin hanapin yung tatay mo? Dali na mahanapin sa Google yung Pingris. Tapos French pa. Eh yung uh, mami ni Danny kasi hindi na Bonnie B. May pagka half French. So, ang ginawa, to make, again, to fast forward the story, na pinpoint nila kung nasan. At nakausap ni Danny ka, na set na yung meeting, they're gonna go to Europe to meet the dad. Kaya lang ito si Mark, sabi niya, baka masapak ko lang yun, ano? Sa laki ko na to, yari yun. Inabandon kami. All my life, I'm looking for a dad. Nagkandihirap-hirap kami. So, punong-puno siya ng galit at hatred at uh, sama ng loob sa tatay niya. Lahat ng hiram niya sa buhay, in niya dahil sa tatay ko yan. In fact, sabi ni Mark sa interview, isang train station na lang, nandun na yung malapit yung bahay ng tatay niya, gusto pa niya mag-back out. Sabi niya, dali ka pa, vira, move tayo Europe. Para lang imitatay mo. But anyway, when he saw his dad, it only took two words para mawala lahat. Sabi, my son. Inawakan siya sa buhok. My son. And then, oh, iyakan na sila. And nakita na niya yung tatay niya. Okay? Uh, uh, pati ang bait din ng stepmother niya. And, and, and bakit nangyari yon? Because si Mark, okay, is overpowered. <laughs> By the kingdom of God. What's reigning in his heart, nung, nung, nung umano na yung puso niya, nakita niya yung tatay niya, it's all about love. Ang namin ron niya sasabihin, pero hindi na niya nasabi. They just embrace each other, and then naramdaman niya yung galit na wala. Grabe, no? And if you look at the story, I mean, panorin niyo na lang sa, sa YouTube ko, okay? Sobrang naging close sila ng tatay niya. Karamihan sa mga gilas games niya sa Spain, Pinapanood ng tatay niya, aarkila ng malaking bahay sa Airbnb, pagkatapos ng games, dun siya tutuloy. And then pumunta sa Pilipinas, nagulat kasi hindi naman niya sinabing uh, superstar siya rito. At si Danica, of course, superstar din. Nagulat kasi lahat ng tao sa airport, nagpapapicture, ano ka ba anak dito, ganyan, ganyan. In French, okay? Hindi niya maintindihan pa nag-French ako eh. So, so anyway, nanood ng finals nung nag-champion ng Pure Foods. I mean, he was just so proud of his son. Bakit ganon? Kingdom of God. Kingdom of God will overlook animosity, overlook uh, uh, enmity, will overlook offense because the kingdom of God, makikita, mararamdaman natin, minahal ako ng king na to kahit patapon ng buhay ko. Anyway, let's continue with the story. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra. The wind child shall put his hands on the others then. So what this verse is saying, the natural order will be restored. 
There's gonna be perfect redemption and there's gonna be peace. Wala, there's gonna be protection under the, the rulership of this king. Okay? They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountains. There's gonna be security. Okay? And not only that, the earth will be filled, okay, by the knowledge of the Lord as the waters covers the earth. What he simply is saying is, yung pong wisdom that comes from God will, will, will come on every facet of society. That everywhere we go, there's gonna be wisdom of God. God's principle will be applied in every facet of society. That's why there's gonna be security, there's gonna be protection, uh, and, and, it's just going to be an awesome kind of kingdom. Nung dumating po si Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago, He inaugurated this kingdom. Kaya po, nakaka-excite because we're living under the reign of Jesus Christ ngayon and it's, and it's, it's just exciting. Every time we share the gospel to people, we're actually adding people to the kingdom of God. Grabe to, no? So as we end today, sini king na to? Anong gagawin niya? At para saan to? Sabi, in the day, the root of Jesse, talking about Jesus, the Messiah, will stand as a banner. A banner is simply a flag during a time of war. Right? And it, its intent is to rally the people around it. Pag kami nakita kang banner, oh, ano yung, ano natin, may, may sinyalis. They're gonna rally towards that flag. And Jesus, and this verse is saying that Jesus will be like that. He's going to serve as the leader. He's going to serve as a banner for the people. And then the nations will rally to him and his resting place will be glorious. And many people shall come and say, Pumunta tayo Come, let's go up to the mountain of the Lord that he may teach us his ways. You bomb picture that people will be drawn to this king. And that's why victory has always been honor God and make disciples. That's what we're doing. Because we're inviting people, come, come and see. Come, taste more. Come and taste that the Lord is good. And people will rally towards Him. Just as I end, it may be a shoot from a seemingly dead stump. But guess what? It's God's doing. Pag tinina mo itong buong Isaiah 11, puro, I will, I will, I will. Wala tayong participation. It's going to be God making it happen. Now the question is, will you trust Him kung feeling mo ganyan pa lang yung nangyayari sa buhay mo? Will you embrace this Savior? And as I end, sabi dito, you will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, though you were angry with me, your anger turned away that you might comfort me. Yun ang sinasabi ko kanina. When God you uh, uh, cut all those trees, what He's saying is, kailangan tayo mag-start from scratch. Kailangan tayo magsimula ulit. Ang dami yung naging idols and all, we're gonna, we're gonna cut them all. But then from a stump, a few remnants of Israel, there will come a shoot from that stump. Grabe, no? And then sabi rito, behold, God is my salvation. And I'm going to trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song and He has become my salvation. Aren't you tired of being afraid? Since last year, sobra, sobrang daming tao na di-depress, na stress, anxiety and all. And then we thought magbubukas na yung ekonomiya and all two weeks ago. But overnight, the Serbs, we had the highest Numbers of COVID po, patient. Hospitals are being full. So some of you are being afraid today. Some of you are being disappointed today. But then again, sabi dito, I will trust and I'm not going to be afraid. You cannot put these two things together. You have faith and fear. It cannot coexist. Either you have fear, mababa ang faith, or walang, walang faith, or you have faith and there's no room for fear. But it cannot coexist. You cannot be equally in faith at the same time fearful. Lord, I'm so in faith sa'yo. Pero Lord, nakakatakot. Sabi ni Lord, ano ba talaga? Ah, nalilito ako sa'yo. If you put your trust in Him, faith dissipates. Fear rather dissipates. Why? 
because you're not relying on your own strength. The Lord God is our strength. And that's my challenge to all of you today. As we end this sermon, will you trust him today? Will you put your full trust in him today? We must learn not to judge God's work by mere external appearances. Kasi parang ang liit lang. Eh, mababago ba yung anak ko niyan? Maba- maayos ba marriage ko niya? Magbabasa lang ako ng Bible? Ha? Magme-memorize lang ako ng verse? Ha? Magpe-pray lang ako? Ano may power ba yan? Dapat dumating si God. Bigyan ako ng isang milyon. Patamain ako sa loto. Siguro mga walang problema ko. Don't, 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 don't. Don't do that. Trust Him in small ways. Those who can be trusted with little will be entrusted with more. Will you let, okay, His kingdom reign over your situation today. I'm gonna leave you with this question. Itanong nyo yan sa, madaling sabihin ng yes. Yes, I, I'm gonna put God, I'm gonna allow God to reign in my situation. Yeah, it's easy to say yes. But deep inside your heart, can you really say, Lord, have it your way. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Lord, not my will, but yours be done. Some of you, look up here, some of you, God is asking you to let go. Let go of something. Let go of that immoral relationship. Yung kingdom niya hindi makareign sa atin kasi we, we are still parang hindering His kingdom to reign. Let go of that fear of lack. Hindi mo ma, ma, matakasan yung malpractice mo sa negosyo because feeling mo pagka itinama ako yung tax ko, pag tinama ako yung pagtitrick ko sa mga tao ko, pag tinama ako yung sweldo, uh, ako naman mababalago. Eh, eh, you let go of that fear. Some of you, you're in a situation na parang feeling mo, nakalakhan ko na to eh. How can the kingdom of God reign? Ito na to. No, 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 no. It's not your job to do the rest. Your job is just to accept Him. Will you let His kingdom reign over your situation today? You know, the people during the time of Palm Sunday, they were all shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna to the highest! They were uh, waving that, that uh, palm branches and then they were all shouting, ito na, hail to the king! Ito na yung sa ating savior! Because they're expecting a king that will save them from their predicament, yung kanilang temporal predicament. Yayaman tong king na to, mahala, papala, ma, mapapalaya tayo sa mga Romano and all. Alam nyo ba the following week? What they're shouting? Crucify him! Grabe, labo, ano? That very same people who are shouting Hosanna are now shouting, crucify him! Palpak pala yan, eh. Hindi naman pala kakalabanin yung mga Romans, eh. eh ano gagawin niyan? Karpintero, nakapagpagaling, pero kaya ba niya labanin mga Romans? Hindi pala. Let's just crucify him. Wow. I don't want you to do that. That we're gonna crucify Christ and we're gonna turn our backs on him. I do hope and pray we're gonna shout Hosanna to the highest all the way. I'll be praying for two sets of people. Kung kayo po, yung parang feeling nyo. Pastor, ako yung nakikita ko, stamp lang, walang pag-asa. Kasi ang laki ng problema ko sa marriage, sa pera, sa sitwasyon, ang laki ng depression ko, may COVID yung nanay ko, tapos makikinig lang ako dito sa preaching na to, babasahin ko lang yung Bible verse, magpe-pray lang ako. Parang ganun lang kaliit yung tingin mo. Pastor, hindi yan ang solusyon. Or maybe you have given up already because ang liit nung stamp, wala na pag-asa tong shoot na to, wala na pag-asa. Maybe it's time to repent and come back to God. Because that's the story of Isaiah. Asking, in, parang pleading for the people to come to Him. So if that's you today, you have a hopeless case, and somehow the feeling mo ang liit ng hope kung si God lang, maybe it's time to recalibrate your perspective on who God is. Can we just pray? Lord, we lift up to you these people, Lord, raising their hands, thinking, Lord, na napaka-insignificant naman, Lord, kung ikaw lang and sometimes, gusto kanilang tulungan, Lord. Kailangan ko na mas maraming pera, mas maraming connection, mas maraming bagay. And sometimes, Lord, we feel na you're not enough. But Lord, today, would you just correct, Lord God, their mindset? Would you just correct them, Lord God, seeing you for who you are, that you're a God of impossibilities. So Father, right now, we pray for these people, Lord God. 
na may mga karamdaman ng mga kamag-anak, naka-intubate, Lord, sa ICU, sa hospital. And parang feeling nila, Lord, kung totoo ka man, ngayon ka na kumilos. But Lord, I pray that you're gonna touch their hearts. You're gonna change, Lord God, their hearts more than their circumstances. Father, those people who are bankrupt because you negosyo, hindi na makabalik-balik. Father, right now, I pray that you will infuse a fresh anointing of your faith, Lord God. Fresh anointing of your grace to these people to trust you again. The way they saw you, Lord God, in the past, they're gonna see you again, Lord, as a mighty God, all-knowing, all-powerful God. So, Panginoon, we repent of the times minamaliit namin ang mga ways mo. But Lord, today, we know that your kingdom will reign over these people in Jesus' name. Amen. And for those of you who's for the first time nakarinig ng ganitong mensahe or you've been attending, by you've been watching this podcast, you've been watching a lot of podcasts in the past, and right now, you haven't given your life to Christ. The starting point for this kingdom to reign is to embrace Him as your Lord and Savior. So this is an opportunity for you to receive Him today as your Lord and Savior and let His kingdom reign. That's a starting point in your hearts. So if that's you, hindi niyo pa po natatanggap ang Panginoong Isus bilang iyong tagapagligtas, this is the greatest moment of your life. Would you just lift your hand if that's you watching right now? Gusto mong tanggapin si Jesus bilang iyong tagapagligtas, sabihin mo lang itong dasal na to Panginoong Isus. Salamat po. Yung kingdom mo ay dumating 2,000 years ago so that I can be saved. Lord Jesus, inaamin ko po na ako'y makasalanan. And starting today, I repent from all my sins. At tinatanggap po kita simula ngayon bilang aking Diyos at tagapagligtas. Thank you, Jesus. May your kingdom reign in my life today and throughout eternity. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's give Him praise. Thank you very much, Pastor Jeff, for that powerful word. Now, for some of you here, you may have responded to Pastor Jeff's prayer. That's the best thing that you have done in your life, surrendering your heart to Jesus Christ. We'd love to connect with you. Iba naman sa atin dito, no, bakal Patagal mo naman ng ginawa na yung decision na yon, and you, you just know that this message hit you hard. We still want to connect with you. Merong link na lilitaw dyan sa baba, no? victory.org slash connect. Or you could just go straight and PM us in our Facebook page. Whatever it is, we'd love to connect with you. Or pwede kayo mag-comment dyan na lang sa comment section ng connect and someone will message you after this service. I like I'd like to pray for you before we end. Lord, thank you very much indeed for what you have done in our lives. You have saved us. You have died on the cross for us. And you have given us salvation. Kaligtasan. Hindi lang dito sa mundong ito, pero pati sa mundo pagkatapos nito. Eternal life. And I pray, Father, even as we approach Holy Week, we will use this time to reflect and look at who you are and what you have done in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you very much for attending our church online. Reminder once again, meron po tayong Holy Week, okay? Devotion or Holy Week kit. All you have to do is to go to this link sa baba or makikita niya sa comment section. And I hope you would join us, kayo ng family nyo, no? Join us and celebrate Holy Week. Next week is Easter Sunday. Please be prepared, okay? And I want to encourage you to share our services. God bless you and see you next week.